Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, very pleased to um, start this last round that we have of uh, lectures for the um, 2.0 competition that we're launching at the Liebling House nowadays. Uh, today, we will have a very special guest from Italy, which I'm going to um, present to you in a second. Um, but just about the Liebling House, uh, we are um, the Liebling House uh, research lab in which we do um, architectural competitions and we have um, uh, research that we're doing on architecture, urbanism and conservation. Um, today we are at the midst of this competition layer 2.0 which is dealing with the second layer of the city which has been, been built right in front of our eyes in Tel Aviv uh, since the conservation plan and the renewable plan uh, for the city, which uh, is currently happening in Tel Aviv. But we are, as the municipality of Tel Aviv, uh, searching for new ways and new ideas to do this uh, second layer, which is very important, uh, not only for Tel Aviv, but also uh, for every other metropolitan uh, in the world, especially today when we talk about no net land take, this fifth facade, um, and the ecological footprint that we leave as a society on the planet um, is um, best pursued in cities if we start to look at this uh, fifth facade as our land resource uh, today. And this is what we're doing in the city of Tel Aviv. And today I am so excited to have um, architect Gustavo Ambrosini with me today to do this lecture. Um, Gustavo wrote a book uh, about the fifth facade um, and the rooftops, and he did a, a very uh, large international research about it, which he's going to present to us today. Uh, Gustavo is a professor for architectural design at the Polytechnicon in Turin and um, the owner of an architectural firm, which unfortunately I cannot pronounce because it's in Italian. So this is where I'm heading over to you, um, Gustavo. We'll have a lecture followed by uh, some open questions from the public. So please, if you want, uh, you can write them in the chat and then we'll have an open conversation with Gustavo, which uh, will have hopefully be fruitful and give us uh, some more ideas about the fifth facade. So thank you and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. And uh, good, uh, good afternoon or, or good evening to, to everybody. Um, so I share my presentation. <clears throat> okay. Voila. You can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so thanks again. And uh, I will discuss about the topic we named uh, uh, Roofscapes, uh, starting from the book that uh, uh, we just published with the obvious publisher. And, and by the way, I would like to compliment with the obvious crew for the excellent work they, they have done. And um, <clears throat> this is one of the research fields that me and my colleague Guido and friend, Guido Caligari, are working on at the School of Architecture of Polytechnic Auditorium, you know, where I teach architectural design and he teaches uh, technology of architecture. Uh, this is a subject at the center of our uh, research activities, but also of our teaching activities, <clears throat> because there is a strong relationship among them. So it's about, uh, I would say, eight, nine years that our students have been dealing with the transformation of the city by experimenting strategies such as building on and integrating new volumes within the existing structure. Uh, the roof, of course, is one of the main traditional elements of architecture and the one that directly refers to the idea of a shelter. And uh, we use the term uh, roofscapes in a sort of, uh, let's say, romantic way <laughs> in order to, to, to mark the importance that the roof can acquire in the discourse uh, uh, about city transformations. Uh, it is a way to introduce the possibility of looking at the roof as a sort of new ground capable of supporting moderate vertical extensions of a building, but also the city life. Um, but we must premise that the, the, 
the, the idea of a vertical expansion is not a new one, of course, and uh, not a good or bad one. Uh, in fact, the theme of the upward expansion of buildings inherent in the very idea of the city. Uh, the cities, uh, especially the European ones, uh, can be considered as the result of a superimposition, a juxtaposition of successive layers dating back to different uh, uh, historical periods. Uh, a bit for joke, <laughs> we could look at the center of my hometown, Turin, as a continuous transformation and why not vertical extension from the original Roman military camp. Uh, seriously, we are used to look at the urban context as a palimpsest, as a palimpsest uh, which undergoes a continuous process of rewriting. So nothing new. But uh, uh, after the Second World War in Europe, uh, the reconstruction period has been accompanied by an intense process of overwriting, which makes very evident the idea of the superimposition. Uh, there are many cases. Uh, some of them are, are, are in some way disguised as simple extension of existing buildings, and we don't even perceive them. Uh, some others are clearly heavy overlaps of different objects with no concern of a pre existing part, and we perceive them, and very often we don't like them. Uh, some others, maybe by well known architects, appear as a sort of manifesto of modern language against traditional ones. Uh, so why, why it is useful to deal uh, uh, again with such arguments in the present day and uh, and now, uh, uh, perhaps it's necessary to widen our view. And um, at an international scale, we go in search for more sustainable development models that the attention towards new strategies for uh, reducing environmental impact and the resource waste. Uh, the risks of land consuming models have fostered a, a warning, a reaction towards uh, urban spoil policies. Uh, in this sense, the, the so called non net land take approach uh, offers a new potential to the new strategy of, uh, of city rooftops. Um, in recent policies, a special attention is paid to the roof as a sort of resident ground uh, by checking its availability. To support a moderate uh, extension, a moderate city extension, adding extra floor space for uh, new functions or greenery. Um, of course, we are not talking a, a, of, about an overall vertical extension, um, but a talk uh, like we, we did in our uh, teaching activities of a urban acupuncture logic, uh, in which limited vertical extensions can provide small scale interventions. So to improve social and cultural values in the involved communities. Uh, it is a concept opposite to the sprawl models uh, oriented at reducing costs and the energy wastes of an urbanization. But is also opposite to the logic of the tabula rasa, of the demolition of the substitution of, of existing uh, estate. Uh, the renovation of the ordinary low quality housing stock constitutes uh, uh, an urgent urban issue. Uh, think of public housing uh, districts built uh, during the post-war industrial boom in Europe. Uh, they show a general bad state of conservation. Uh, they, they lack thermal insulation of facades, they, uh, of windows. They require installation of active and passive energy system and so on. Um, <clears throat> So the uh, uh, vertical extension should be a part of redevelopment uh, policies uh, of the existing real estate, enhancing an increase in the life cycle of the buildings. And uh, in some way, this scopes with the general framework of what is called the renovation wave for Europe uh, in the target plan uh, 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 intended to cut net greenhouse gas emissions in Europe uh, by 2030. Uh, energy efficiency, decarbonization, integration of renewables, life cycle thinking, and are some of the keywords. Well, one of the most common strategies is to make a retrofit intervention. But uh, uh, the action of retrofitting uh, existing estates in order to improve energy efficiency 
just to put the accent only on the construction performance as a mere technological matter. Uh, instead, the current challenges consist in the setting out of an inclusive approach so that to avoid a separate attitude and, and to assimilate the technical items into the architectural identity issues. Uh, in this framework, the group should undergo great changes. For instance, the cover of residential buildings uh, can play a key role in strategies aimed in joining the improvement of energy and functional performance with the increase of the number of dwellings. But also, the same can happen uh, uh, relating to the public or service building, where uh, the necessity amelioration of energy efficiency, but also of safety standards can meet the uh, integration of new activities within the urban uh, network. And uh, this process is uh, in some way accompanied by specific directives at the international level. Uh, for instance, the city of Paris has settled, just to cite one, the, the, the new uh, Regle de construction d'extension vers les eaux, uh, where they analyzed the capacity for the development of, of buildings in Paris and they identified the vertical extension of existing buildings as a sustainable and innovative solution in order to meet the ambitious uh, aim of producing 10,000 uh, residential units per year. So we intend the uh, city of Cape redesign as an, uh, an adaptive attitude based on the knowledge about the dynamic process of transformation of a, of a, of a physical realm. But uh, the roof is not just something uh, like a, a, a sometimes usable ground. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it, could be, it could be one of, of the most uh, powerful imaginative place in the city. I took this picture uh, last summer in Florence and uh, showed how the roof has a great potential uh, of imagination. And uh, well, we must say that very often the, roof, the space uh, of the roofs looks like a pure technical space created by a series of anonymous and unpleasant objects, uh, uh, chins, pipes, uh, fans, uh, refrigeration machines, uh, antennas, uh, panels, photovoltaic panels, uh, advertising, and so on. Uh, a space not uh, inhabited, a space not designed for people. But beyond that, uh, other objects seem to express the desire of a reconquest of a space for the human sphere. Uh, shrubs, pergolas, gazebos, Tents, uh, uh, deck chairs, little gardens, spaces first inhabited by people in order to better inhabit the city. And um, these hidden uses of rural spaces can be visible thanks to the development of aerial photography. And I think the, one of the sharpest, sharpest representations of our roofs I use can be found in the well-known works of uh, Alex McLean, one of, of the most important uh, photographer, uh, aerial photographer. Uh, in his book, uh, uh, Up on the Roof, uh, he offers a, a deep view on how uh, it is used at the top level of the city of New York. Uh, and he discovers the enormous potential of outdoor and indoor spaces above the buildings, uh, uh, basketball, tennis courts, cocktail bars, uh, uh, playgrounds, uh, uh, pools, uh, some bakers, uh, uh, gardens, farms, and so on. Um, but talking about imageries, let's say that uh, uh, those have shown its potential of escape way uh, from ordinary constraints uh, during the lockdown period, sometimes in funny ways. Um, actually, the imagery associated with the uh, use of a roof uh, uh, is often considered uh, uh, in terms of out of the ordinary experience uh, uh, and this feeling is uh, amplified by the scenographic uh, uh, cinematographic visions in which very often the roof is uh, uh, depicted as in another place so a hundred of movies uh, uh, there are hundreds of movies where the, in which the, the, the most iconic and emotional scenes uh, are on roof. Uh, maybe chase scenes with adrenaline pumping uh, sequences, uh, uh, action scenes uh, causing a feeling of vertigo or dramatic melancholy or enchanting atmospheres 
or dense scenes uh, of freeing energies. Uh, and, and we're not talking about the rooftop concerts like the pioneer by Jefferson Airplane and Beatles and then many, many, many others followed. So a space for unusual, where extraordinary relationship between the human sphere and the surrounding world can take place. Uh, there are some uh, keywords that are often used. One is the, of the fifth facade, uh, to think of a roof as a fifth facade of a building. Well, I, I think one of the uh, um, uh, most uh, clear examples of that should be this uh, project by, by artist Alexander Calder, this large painting that Alexander Calder realized in uh, 1974 in Grand Rapids. Uh, he painted the large roof of a Kent County administration building with a large spot of red and black uh, color on a white background. And it confers a, a dynamic feature to that flat surface visible from all the buildings around it and established a relationship with the sculptor that he created a few years before in the, in the square. And so this pictorial approach can, can recur in various experiences um, after the big paintings uh, aimed at some way redeeming uh, the forgotten roofs uh, carried out by artists like uh, LIP or uh, Ten Ten or uh, the, the, the funny uh, transformation of the roof of the MoMA uh, with these uh, plastic uh, uh, rubber uh, trees and shrubs designed by artist uh, Ken Smith. Uh, then uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, opposite uh, imageries uh, we should discuss about uh, about roof. One is a uh, top-down look story versus bottom-up informal. Uh, so one side, the idea of, of the roof as a luxury domain where the elite enjoy exclusive experiences. We know that the invention of the elevator, or better not the elevator itself, but the invention of a safety break break prefabricated, fabricated by Alicia Otis in uh, 1854, uh, made it possible to complete overturn of a vertical layer in the city. It overturned the, the, the hierarchical occupation of the different levels of the building when the lower noble floor was reserved for the welfare uh, people and the higher floor were used by servants. And, uh, and the city of New York uh, uh, was one of the first to show this overturn, both in residential and both in leisure buildings. In, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, columnists define New York, uh, uh, New York nightlife, uh, as seen as the uh, uh, roof garden season, where high society could enjoy these open, new open spaces that have been built. Uh, above the TRC cafe and spaces for concert and performances. And uh, nowadays, this idea of a bond between luxury and the idea of exclusive architecture with exclusive views is best symbolized by typologies such as a rooftop bars or rooftop infinity pools. Uh, in advertising, we find expressions like uh, a superlative expression like a, a standing private suite on the top floor or a, an oasis where you can feel the breeze against your skin, a, a skip on a dream, can get into breathtaking panoramas. And, uh, and the infinity pool is, in, in some ways, the element that most of all recalls the idea of exclusivity derived from the, the top position, uh, a seemingly endless stretch of water. We, we, we can physically get out of our ordinary condition. We undress and then we dive into the water with a, a, a extraordinary feeling of swimming above the landscape. On the opposite side, it is the informal use of the city. Um, very often in, Asia, in South Asia, uh, East Asia and, and, uh, and the African metropolis. Um, when uh, there is a, a sort of illegal uh, occupancy of rooftop by tourist classes, they are autonomous and unauthorized uh, communities that draw outside and literally on the top of, of the legal city. And one of the most notorious cases has been documented by the book Perpetual from Above by Stephen Kana and Rufino Wu, 
uh, Hong Kong, uh, the, the, the huge immigration flow of low income people uh, um, uh, posted phenomenon of informal settlements, and uh, many thousands of people settled the community of dwellers on the flat roofs of several high rise buildings in the center of the town. And the structures are made of every kind of poor recycled materials. Uh, they are in precarious conditions. So it is a sort of elevated shanty town. Uh, another uh, couple of opposite uh, is uh, uh, an architectural uh, imagery is the, the one distance versus proximity, distance versus raising ground. Uh, the first category should be related to the idea of detachment from the ground. Uh, in the sense of the uh, Volcan Vogel by LCT can be considered as one of the forerunners on many utopian monuments of technological progress designed in the course of the century. Uh, it's never built Skyhooker, was designed as a long uh, cantilever slab standing on 50 meters uh, above the, the, the space junctions, the, the mystery junctions in, uh, in Moscow. Uh, an horizontal layer uh, far from the ground that expressly separated uh, urban habitat, and also the fight to the law of gravity. And the many mega structural dreams of the 60s, uh, Super Studio, Jana Friedman, and many others, uh, owe a lot to it. And among the closest realizations, uh, we can find, we can mention the Ministry of Transportation of Tbilisi, which is a monumental complex uh, made of five concrete blocks, uh, uh, in mutually interlocked, uh, standing on uh, three vertical cores, or, or the Tree of Life in Venezuela by Fruto Vivas. Again, uh, several bars, uh, three story bars uh, that overlap each other uh, as if they were floating in the air. And uh, one of the most uh, recent examples of uh, this, uh, in some way, distance approach, uh, that we must have a marina bay sands in Singapore, uh, according to the project of Moshe Satya. 50 meter, uh, uh, 50 seven story tower support a transversal boat shaped volume that measures more than one hectare. And it is a, uh, uh, it hosts a uh, uh, restaurant, cafe, trees, and the pool above, above the city. And on, on the opposite side, the attitude to deal with the roof of a building as it were part of the ground. Uh, the upper part of the building is, should be modeled and, and get a, a sculptural shape providing a sort of a stage for human activities in direct connection with the landscape. Uh, the main feature of Villa Malaparte by Alberto Libera in Capri uh, is undoubtedly the, the road terrace uh, and a, a sort of inverted pyramidal stair uh, allowed to ascend at the solarium toward the view of, of the sea and the sky. And uh, at the same time, it acts as a theater uh, facing the islands, uh, panorama with plants and rocks. Um, so this pure geometrical volume reaches a, a harmonious relationship with the landscape. And uh, it's like a, something like a perfect stage for the representation of human dramas. And, the, 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 um, and Jean-Luc Godard in his movie, Le Mépris, admirably caught it. And so many contemporary projects can exemplify our materials, uh, enhance the physical experience of the uh, accessible roof, uh, the way people interact uh, with it by touching, by, by sitting, by, by, by stomping. Uh, for instance, wood is the main feature of Yokohama International Passenger Terminal designed by foreign office architects where a series of wooden folded surfaces provide a strong tactile feeling. People experience the building by walking, climbing, uh, and lying on the upper deck, as well as navigating uh, uh, the internal pathway and ramps along many levels. Or, or brick ties, uh, uh, like the project in Tunicino by Alessandro Anselmi, where the blending of the traditional elements of architecture, the floor, the facade, the roof, that transforms the building itself in a public square uh, or a stone. Uh, for instance, the Oslo Opera House by Znoeta uh, 
it becomes a, an architectural pathway made of inclined pedestrian surfaces, uh, like urban streets connecting the sea level uh, uh, to the upper terrace. But I should say also something about the idea of uh, use of a roof and uh, the, the birth of modernity, because of the concept of a roof uh, as a living space, like a, like a ground for human activities, is a recurring theme in the architectural debate of the 20th century. Uh, a, a conceptualization of a roof that converges, uh, in which converges the faith on technological advance, uh, uh, as well as suggestions uh, from the hygienist theories uh, and, uh, and from the machine age vision. Uh, it is very known about the controversy in which the modern flat roofs were opposed to the conservative pitch roof. Uh, the great role uh, was played by Walter Gropius. For instance, he, he, he um, launched a questionnaire in the magazine Bauwelt about the flat roof involving all the uh, leading figures of modernism in Europe, like Le Corbusier, Mendelssohn, Hoffman, Old, Bear, and so many others. And uh, the flat roof easily appeared as a common trait that required indifferent modernism in Europe. And it was stated in some way in the, in the construction of, uh, of uh, Weissenhoff in Stuttgart. Uh, Ms. Van der Rohe established that the rule, the main rule was the adoption of a flat roof. And, uh, and also Ernest May in Frankfurt, in, in the magazine Does Not Your Frankfurt, uh, published several essays in defense of a flat roof. I mentioned an ethical force as a new living expressive form, a shared unit in the housing, especially the idea of a unit in the society. Um, and that, of course, generated a reaction in conservationist uh, position intended to preserve national identity, heritage, tradition, and so on. But the, the roof garden is perhaps the most uh, successful of the famous five points of architecture by, by Le Corbusier. And uh, uh, the status, the new status assigned to the roof by, uh, by Le Corbusier established uh, the, the, the had to be an inhabitable space. And uh, the relationship among the, the first two principles, the PLT, the support, and the roof garden, in terms of kind of displacement uh, process that evolved the traditional elements of architecture. So the individual support allowed the house to be raised at an intermediate level, uh, a detection from the dampness of the soil. Uh, and so the, the, the garden can pass uh, uh, below the house, and the roof garden will be will become the most powerful place uh, in the building. And uh, the techniques of a representation used by Le Corbusier have a strong role in demonstrating the potential space of a habitable roof. Uh, for instance, the use of a sketch uh, depicts it as a room uh, in the house in which it is as if the ceiling has been removed, freeing the breath towards the sky. And also the use of an axonometric view uh, puts the garden roof in the foreground, uh, enhancing its compositional value. Uh, but it's necessary to recall that in the works of Le Corbusier, uh, the, the flat roof uh, keep a, a, a multifaceted character, a, a, a different character, following a sort of progressive detachment from the interior space. In, in many, many projects, like this one of, uh, of a university residence, uh, um, is just a, a sort of extension of a private domestic space. Uh, wrote about a, a room with a corner to gaze at the stars. Uh, then it became the climax point of the architectural promenade in Villa Sawa. Uh, revealing the culminating point of a, of a ramp that uh, interlets the room along a continuous sequence in the house. Or it acted uh, like a, a machine of vision in the, base, the base degree attic in Paris, 
or have internal space and the full level of privacy were considered to offer an intimate and a surrealist experience. And uh, the most surreal space is the top of a building where, uh, in some way, the, the, the view, the, these white walls uh, uh, partially hide the view of the monuments of the city in the distance and surround the grass carpet uh, open to the sky. Uh, filled with a false uh, fireplace and living room furniture, which is a, a classic uh, <laughs> imprint of the base that you was a, a very important uh, surrealist collection. And uh, finally, in, uh, <clears throat> in the Unité d'Habitation uh, uh, in Marseille, uh, uh, the roof is a place physically and formally distinct from the residential sphere below it, uh, where residents endeavor and uh, at your size. It's uh, like a podium uh, punctuated by uh, a composition of uh, rough concrete sculptural objects of elements like the kindergarten, the gym, the, the swimming pool, uh, the, the, the tall uh, ventilation stacks, uh, but be shaped to an artificial landscape object. But there, there is no vegetation here. And this abstract uh, representation is meant to express the idea of social livability on the roof. And uh, ironically, uh, a different vision emerged in a building where Le Corbusier acted as a consultant. In this building, the Ministry of Education helped in uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, designed by a team of architects led by Lucio Costa, the great landscape architect uh, Robert Bourlemars proposed that extension among nature and artifice for the roof garden. Uh, in contrast with the straight rational lines of uh, Le Corbusier modernism, Bourlemars proposed to cover the lower wing of a building with sinuous and meandering vegetation masses reflecting the features of a tropical uh, landscape. Organic form, textures, and vivid colors introduce a dynamic feeling. <clears throat> well, I must run. <laughs> so, this is my last uh, uh, section. Uh, I'm, going, I, I'm coming back to, to our book. Uh, we try to make a sort of survey among uh, worldwide case studies. Uh, of course, not a, a, a a complete survey in some way, it is very subjective. Uh, we searched for case studies showing how to innovate traditional categories like housing, offices, facilities. Uh, we, we tried to find a project that, according to us, challenged uh, with different approaches the reinvention of urbanity characters. And, uh, and many, many of them test new technologies to set up light and quick systems in order to deal with structural constraints and the inhabited places. And uh, so there are several typologies. Uh, one is the most common of the work to do on historical residential buildings. Uh, with top area design is in some way intertwined with a more general instance or intervention in the historical heritage. This is the very field of, uh, of restoration. And uh, <clears throat> Well, pro the project we illustrate in the book uh, provide uh, multiple approaches, different, but they all share the common matrix of a refusal of a stylistic restoration. The intervention on existing heritage is considered as a critical action. Um, there are many important references to bear in mind. One, uh, probably the most famous of the topic, the one made by Copy Mebler in, in Vienna. Uh, it was a sort of big manifesto for a new wing of the historical city. This uh, wing uh, skeletal uh, uh, element uh, there in glazed panels uh, uh, in some way violently breaks the continuous surface of the roof and it produces a vivid tension uh, between the roof and the street. And this, this is a sort of uh, emblem of a, was uh, one of the emblem of the contrast the constructivist exhibition in MoMA in 1988, and uh, in some way dynamically expressed the ongoing complexity. But also the project by M. De in uh, the Gibbon Village in Rotterdam uh, turns uh, an individual space, the extension 
of a family residence in an urban icon where this pitch blue, blue polyurethane volume uh, are disposed to create a pattern of plazas and streets, uh, providing a village like abstract atmosphere. And so there uh, are selected many cases. I'm not showing all of them and I'm not uh, 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 describing them. Just want to, to, to point out a uh, few uh, things. So one is that very important uh, project in, in Copenhagen. Uh, the invention of a roof was uh, something that uh, uh, regarded uh, both the private space uh, for new penthouses and uh, in Taiwan, this creation of a new space for private with new spaces for, for collective uh, uses. And so they reinvented the rooftop garden. And the rooftop garden is something not uh, general, but it has been declined in many, many different components. So it's the children, there is the children play area, there is the green slope, there is the wooden deck, there is the kitchen area, and also the viewing platform uh, above the stairs. Um, or the, another house in Bradford by Cass Schomburg architects. Um, a, specific, a very strong relationship among the, the, the form and the structure. Uh, the, the, in some way, the sculptural aspect of the roof reflects uh, the construction of the primary structure. Uh, it was necessary not to bear in the middle of a, of a building. So it is a, a sort of self-supporting system that bears only on the lateral uh, walls or the external walls. And this surface is a, a, a folded plate uh, uh, made by cross laminated timbers supporting some way in some places by, by trusses. So a continuous structural folded surface. In this case, in uh, Mexico City, uh, Cadaval and Sola Morales in some way excavated an old uh, historical, an old abandoned historical house uh, to introduce a new complexity of use, a new complexity of living. And in between the new intervention with, uh, with the old house in a very clear way, uh, black and white, <laughs> and, uh, but the two parts are naturally, uh, mutually interrelated. And uh, um, so whether you express the, the complexity introduced in this uh, old house with a series of uh, volumes and of terraces of gardens so on the roof. And uh, this theme of a complex uh, expression of a complexity of the way of life on the roof uh, should be also represented in this project in Vienna by PMPAG architects where uh, um, a sequence of different volumes are disposed around a, a, a little plaza and it creates a vivid uh, roofscape that uh, recalls the image of the village but in the same in the same time it uh, uh, um, respect the conservation uh, area regulation because we are in the same historical center of the town and <clears throat> a second uh, topic is the of factory use, uh, starting from the first intervention in the United States in the mid 60s. The industrial buildings reuse has become one of the most uh, intriguing fields where to, uh, where to explain the relationship between the old and the new. And the uh, rooftop redesign uh, often plays an important role, sometimes the most eye catching one. And uh, there are, of course, many different way of approach. And I just uh, recommend some of them. Uh, one is the completion, the idea of completion. So for instance, the, the project of uh, Herzog de Moron in London, the Tate Modern, in some way activated a subtle transformation strategy respecting the original architecture. And the, the, the rooftop addition is uh, uh, this bright and glazed volume. In some way, it completes uh, the, the massive brickwork uh, building what they call the horizontal body of light where people can gather at the end of the visit and, and uh, have a spectacular viewpoint over the town. While the project of Orange Copiano in some way uh, uh, 
first of the idea of counterpointing. Uh, it is a very respectful conversion project of a uh, original uh, uh, factory, but then two foreign objects in some way land on the roof. Uh, they have a bubble space shaped conference room and the terrazzle chest, a very sophisticated canopy of uh, glass plates. And uh, in some way, it pushes the limits of high technology, calling for extraordinariness uh, in order to, to create an icon of a company brand. Uh, but also, another a, a approach can be the subtraction. In the restoration of uh, all the water music moves, yeah, Quando Marobaldi remodeled the upper part of the building and recovered the original prismatic shape of the lower part. Uh, this becomes a support for new sculptural volumes. And in some way, this activated the perception of the cumulative process of the historical classification. And uh, among the projects we published in the book, there are some projects that uh, are uh, very, very respectful of the uh, historical character, like this one was a, a, a historical uh, listed. Uh, uh, leader factory, and uh, so they wanted to enhance the existing architectural features. And so the new structure is uh, uh, very minimalist, uh, uh, very respectful. It is a recessive in some way, it's quite hidden. While in other cases, uh, uh, <clears throat> this was not listed, but in some way significant. Uh, uh, the, the new functions, new leisure uh, activities, new studio office units, uh, push the, the idea of counterpoint with uh, this uh, black uh, metal uh, volumes that in some way reminds the, the, the old, old uh, industrial uh, landscape and also roofscapes of, of the district. And, uh, and also enhance the internal connections that they often work on, on double height of, uh, of the volume. And uh, this uh, interesting project in China, and uh, some way uh, worked on a double identity, the exterior identity that uh, reinforces the idea of a rust uh, industrial building. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, on the riverfront, uh, it is a port. So, in some way, it reminded of the shipbuilding. Um, they left the, the concrete uh, uh, rough and uh, counterpoted with a new cotton, rough new cotton steel uh, uh, volume. While uh, in the interior, I'm sorry, here we don't have a picture, is a supine, very clean surface, very clean volume excavated, all white, uh, bright, and vivid taste to rest inside the building. And um, well, uh, the last, uh, the last, um, last item is, uh, no, not, not the last, uh, it's uh, the social housing. Uh, so the rooftop residents would need to go in need to improve energy and functional performance of post-war neighborhoods offering also the opportunity to add the new floor space while keeping existing structures. Uh, it implies the possibility to add a, a layer of city identity to massive public housing space that were apparently sentenced to an unchangeable future. Um, and uh, especially in these cases, uh, the need to avoid or reduce inhabitant relocation during the refurbishment works leads to the use of cutting edge technologies and the new prefabricated dry system. Uh, modular lightweight and prefabricated timber-based elements often integrated with plant and energy system. Uh, in this case, uh, the, for the state in uh, Cologne, it was a, a, a real district. There were uh, 11 blocks with uh, 300 units and uh, about uh, uh, 80 uh, new dwellings were created um, on the top of existing buildings and the, the existing building uh, undergone the process of renewal of, of technical installations, of, of insulation, of uh, 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 heating, uh, uh, 
the thermal landing of the entrance is a new balconies. And um, from a point of view of architectural image, the architects wanted to uh, keep a, a very simple uh, language, but to express a new <clears throat> way of living by you know, this, uh, as they said, Mediterranean color, to add a new vivid color in this, uh, in this uh, landscape. While uh, in, uh, in Italy, uh, in Milano, uh, our friend of uh, Studio Albori, they made this interesting project. They had the possibility just to add a, a, just a new floor and not to touch the below floors. And so the idea of, uh, of this dwelling was to create a, a new kind of terrace uh, dwellings uh, accessible by a wooden porch and uh, on the top of them to create uh, uh, little gardens. And uh, in this case, uh, it was very important the participation of inhabitants in the creation of a, of a some way colorful and vivid uh, new uh, landscape. And uh, again, in Tolbiac, uh, this project was uh, the habilitation of a building from the 1970s and uh, three and two uh, new floors were added for a total new uh, 70 rooms uh, and uh, um, they used a, a, a wooden prefabricated system uh, and used wood for the structure but also for the um, formal appearance for, for the cladding. Finally, this is the last, uh, <clears throat> last topic. Uh, the vertical extension is a strategy that can expand the public buildings like school or spaces for cultural activities. And uh, the case studies, uh, we, we tried to find some case studies that could show the uh, double opportunity on the one hand to host uh, new functions or to expand the existing ones. And on the other hand, to recreate new special features in the interiors suitable to enhance the collective character of the building. For instance, in this building in Lima, the School of Art, uh, a, the traditional building, masonry building, was contemplated by a very light uh, glass building. And, uh, and uh, the focus was the, the courtyard, the patio. And uh, the idea of the patio led to the idea to, to, to build a, a sort of spiral uh, skywalk around it uh, to create a, a a continuous collective space that uh, uh, could uh, uh, lead to uh, to the roof. And uh, well, one of the most outstanding example of roof extension for me is uh, this project uh, in Berlin, where the, um, it was necessary to, to to build new classrooms, music room, library, and uh, to to renovate completely the the building of the post-war reconstruction. And, uh, and the new volume is clad in copper and the copper sometimes goes down uh, covering part of the uh, existing building. And uh, in, in some way, this, uh, this new volume distinguishes itself, but yet a better quality to the pool and express the possibility to have a, a, a surprising uh, interior space with different shapes uh, uh, according to the different new functions that uh, will be hosted. Finally, this is the last one, the saga. Uh, again, the creation of the new uh, classrooms and the communal spaces lead to a, a construction of a roof structure, of a, an extension with a, the shape of a sort of folded surface. And uh, the, the, the change of material, the, the metal against the brick here expresses a sort of, of symbiotic relationship among the, the old and the new part. So, <clears throat> to conclude, uh, uh, the, the, the many case studies uh, uh, we discussed in the book uh, tried to, to express a specific attitude uh, to be distinguished from two opposite trends. On the one hand, uh, the logic of a mere extension of the original fabric, uh, considered a simple repetition of already existing space and forms. 
On the other hand, the superimposition of an autonomous object acting as a parasite upon an existing building. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the relationship between the new intervention of existing construction should refer to the concept of mutualism uh, as a symbiotic association in which both partners benefit from reciprocal advantages. Uh, the two components, uh, although different in terms of spatial logic and, uh, and formal expression, are dependent on and conditioned by each other. It is what in biology is described as a reciprocal exchange of nutrients. Uh, in this sense, these projects belong to a symbiotic approach that exploits the extraordinary, extraordinary of, of a top condition offered by the roof uh, in order to foster a subtle change in the full building uh, organization. Okay, I finished. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, it was very interesting uh, for us, uh, especially in Tel Aviv, where we are doing um, building extensions all the time to see uh, sort of a research about other projects in the world uh, is super fascinating. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to start with two questions from the audience. There are two raised hands. Uh, there is Carolina and uh, Nili. And so Carolina, if you want to... Um, to say something, please. And you are on mute, um, Carolina. Um, if not, then one second. Um, yes. Okay, unfortunately, I don't know why it's not. Um, you can you, you can also write if you if you don't speak if you cannot speak. Yes, please uh, write Carolina and Nili. Um, I'll check with the technician why we cannot. Uh... We, you can write in the in the chat. Um, yes. See the chat. <clears throat> Okay, if anybody has questions, please uh, please write in the chat. Um, I will start um, with a, a question from my side. Uh, maybe we will have uh, some questions for the audience uh, later on. So um, you were mentioning this sort of relationship um, that the existing building has with the new one. Um, and I was wondering about that in terms of um, your ideas of uh, what best way is to implement a sort of extension if uh, the addition um, has to uh, literally connect to the existing building or, uh, is, or, or do you think it should be a contrast uh, to the existing building um, in terms of you know, the usage and in terms of perhaps um, also um, the sustainable aspect of it. I mean, is it like a cocoon on top, which is uh, embedded in the existing tissue? Or do you find that more, um, more projects are sort of a, an addition on top, which uh, do not uh, sort of uh, collide with the um, interior of the uh, existing building at all? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, we enter in the range of opinions. <laughs> But uh, um, I, I think, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, I'm not really interested when uh, when the addition just counterpoint without relationship with the uh, with the uh, <clears throat> with existing. Uh, I think in many in many cases, of course, it was just a, <clears throat> an extension. For instance, in many um, residential buildings. But in some cases, the new uh, dwellings should uh, open a new ways to, to imagine uh, residential uh, uh, spaces. So in some cases, it is very interesting to notice that there are also different typologies. You have in the base uh, traditional uh, housing block and uh, maybe the rooftop can uh, some way <clears throat> be the space for innovation new forms of housing 
for different users so in order to, to provide a, a mixed use of, 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 of a city of a square. Um, when uh, in other cases uh, uh, the for, for instance in, in the many cases when there is an industrial uh, uh, situation uh, in about an abandoned factory uh, <clears throat> the, the, the idea of contrast the fact to use the, the existing uh, building as a sort of a base to be counterparted by uh, very different materials and colors uh, it is a, a quite a quite used strategy uh, I think it is interesting to notice that uh, always uh, they they act uh, together. So there will be a, a final <laughs> uh, result, and uh, uh, which is made of this contrast. So in, in some cases it should be really appropriated. In some other cases, uh, uh, I think it is interesting to notice when it expresses an in, also an interior uh, layout, for instance, or, or, or to compare. To, I, I always going to to search for the sections when I, when I, when I when I look in this uh, project try to understand how is the space inside of a building uh, how this contrast can really express something that is inside of a building an innovation of a user or is just a, a formal uh, question a, a formal uh, attitude mm -hmm. so, uh, I don't know if I have uh, replied. <laughs> Yes, very, very much. Thank you. Another question I have, and then we'll also uh, ask uh, some from the panelists, is, I mean, in Tel Aviv, um, there's a specific uh, approach to building addition, which is also happening in the conservation plan, because Tel Aviv is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and we give building rights on top of historic buildings. Um, you mentioned uh, also something similar. But uh, in many cases, we see that, um, unfortunately, as you mentioned, this sort of a fifth facade as a um, perhaps a luxury um, uh, possibility to add on sort of a, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, infinity pools and uh, uh, condominiums, like luxury condominiums on, on top of those buildings. A lot of, uh, a lot of times we have the problem of gentrification uh, sort of that changes the social structure of these buildings because of the Sort of new um, luxurious layer uh, on the top. Uh, have you uh, seen um, this sort of um, development in other cities as well? Well, yes, uh, of course, it's uh, it's uh, so it is a danger. <laughs> I think uh, I I was interested in the search also of uh, case studies of a book in a project that seemed to be rooted in a in a, in a community in a place. Uh, um, yes, in, in many cases, uh, especially, I, I don't think it, it will happen in uh, in, uh, in residential uh, cases. Maybe many location, maybe perhaps many locations in the city center can can uh, yes be, be some way uh, <coughs> become a, a part of uh, gentrification. And uh, it is very important to, to, to find a, a balance uh, and uh, to, to discuss about what the community uh, can, can earn from, uh, from, this, uh, from this new intervention. Yes, yes, it is, uh, it is very important. But th this is why I, I try to, to point out the, the contrast, because uh, in some way we, we have the idea of a luxury, but in some other ways it is a place of abandonment spaces. Uh, they often use it informally, but also in our towns, <laughs> uh, not uh, not so uh, uh, not at the level of uh, as we have seen uh, <clears throat> in the case that I showed. But but the, the use of a space as a as a potentiality uh, in some way uh, expressed by the possibility to open to the sky. Uh, I use a <laughs> I use a term that is in some way the, the roof is a smoke out space. You know, smoke out is a, is a term that we use also in Italian. Uh, yes. uh, smoke out is a, is a, something related to the fire protection rules. Something is a, a window on the roof that can open when, when there is a fire. And so the roof in some way is smoke out space. 
And in COVID, uh, in COVID, we saw a lot of uh, period, a lot of people who went to the roof. To yes. Right? So, so you see the potentiality, and uh, it should be also related to the uh, existing situation. And of course, it must be aware of gentrification. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so two questions from the audience. Uh, Carolina Gonia Kultus, I hope I pronounced your name right. Good evening. How do you think the climate conditions impact the use and choice of the way of treatment of the rooftops? Yes, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's a good question. Of course, uh, it is very important because uh, uh, completely changes uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's quite uh, obvious, but uh, uh, the, the idea itself of a Mediterranean roof as a space to be used was in the, in the imagery that the same Le Corbusier, <laughs> we find the, the designs of, of the towns of Mediterranean in the sketches of Le Corbusier. And it was one of the main uh, suggestions he proposed uh, for the idea of a flat roof. And uh, so it's very, it's of course, easier to to think at a space that is very used also from the part of a, as an exterior space. And uh, I think it is very interesting to keep uh, the possibility to rethink the rooftop, uh, not just as a mere extension, also different uh, in shape, in architectural shape, an extension of the inside, while to, 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 to keep uh, the possibility to use the outside. So the idea of a garden roof is still very, very important for me. And of course, it changed a lot uh, relating to the climate conditions. Yes. Another um, question from Zef Schwartz. Are there examples of the change in use of residential ground floor for public use as part of grading a street experience and um, adding residential floors on the roof instead of missing them on the ground floor? I guess he's asking about like the, um, the switch uh, um, that can happen uh, on the rooftop for a sort of a public use. Well, I, I am sorry, I, I, I didn't find that. It's something I very often propose to my students to, to, to design, to make a project like this, because it's very interesting. But uh, I, we didn't find a, a project like that. Of course, it's quite, uh, well, uh, probably in cases where we are dealing with public housing, if you change the, the rules of public housing and uh, if a uh, state or the public administration want to introduce new buildings can do something like this, but uh, dealing with private buildings is uh, literally impossible <laughs> because it's not possible to overturn and, uh, and to change this uh, existing uh, patrimonial situation. But uh, nevertheless, I think it is very interesting uh, 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 perhaps it's more easy in other kind of uh, uh, buildings. Uh, for instance, in public buildings, there are a lot of schools that need to be more open for people because the schools are open and used till uh, mid afternoon when they close. And so, one of the most interesting things how to use also in other hours, also during the weekends. And so, the possibility to change the use of a part of a public building, like a school, uh, to, add new, to add new functions on the roof and to reuse a part of the ground floor is a, is a thing very interesting. Yeah. Great. Um, last question from my side. Um, are there any extensions with new materials that uh, you can point out? I mean, it's very interesting to think about this uh, space as an experimental space because, of course, the it's sort of calling for a light structure on the roof or uh, perhaps something that uh, wouldn't bar in the structural, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, um, scheme of the existing building. So um, are there any interesting new materialities that you can uh, point out which were used on the roof? Well, um, I, me and my colleague Guido Calagari are, are very interested in, uh, in timber structures, especially Guido is, an, uh, is a professor of uh, technology of architecture, is an expert of timber and uh, 
We are working uh, also with architect Paolo Simeone, who teaches together uh, in Politecnico Torino. And so we are very keen <laughs> in the structure. And we are very happy that we have found a lot of uh, the most part, the most of the buildings we, uh, I showed uh, are made uh, the, the rooftop extension in timber. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes, of course, in a, a metal structure. In, in every case, they are lightweight structure because, uh, of course, it is necessary to, 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 to make a, a quick uh, building phase. And, uh, and, uh, and of course, there is a problem of structural uh, support. So not possible to build a, a oh, well, it's more difficult to build a, a vertical extension in concrete. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, th I think the, the, the frontier will be really, uh, uh, mm. will be really about the timber structure. Yes. Good. Okay, so there is another remark from Tamar Lanier. I would like to thank Mr. Gustavo. It was fascinating and reminded us that demolition is not the only way to update and modernize. So thank you. That's what she says. And I would like to also thank you, Gustavo, for this wonderful, inspiring lecture. Um, I really think that, uh, um, yeah, there is more to see. I have your book and um, I would like to send everybody um, or say to everybody that you can purchase it online and I think it's, it's really, really good. Um, also, I would like everybody to be aware of our competition layer 2.0, which you can still register for. Um, it's a prize winning competition about exactly the idea of what to do with the rooftops um, in um, a modern city like Tel Aviv, perhaps an example also for other metropolitans uh, around the world. Um, and we are really looking in the municipality for new ideas um, of how to create a, an interesting space about new materials, about what it can be rather than only perhaps uh, um, uh, housing or how housing could be different in our days when we're facing climate change. Um, so please don't hesitate to still um, register for the competition. It's all in our website, layer. 2.0. Uh, so thank you, Gustavo, and I hope to uh, maybe perhaps invite you here to Tel Aviv once to see what we're doing and perhaps uh, have you uh, lecture uh, live here. That would be great. Yeah, and, sure. Um, okay, thank you very much. And I'm very interested in the competition results, so please keep me informed. Yes, you... yes. We'll have a lecture series as well as a, um, uh, an exhibition and a book. So. I hope this is plenty of material that we can also send to you later. Very good. So, thank, you. thank you everybody for joining and I hope to see you all again. Um, goodbye for now. Bye to everybody. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.